And no, because that's what the Bible says. So it's the hope of our salvation. We know that we've been saved because we place our hope in Jesus Christ. We place our hope in the Bible as the Word of God. And if we truly see it as our hope, not just of things past or things present, but when it comes to the things future as well, when it comes to heaven, well then we're going to meditate upon these things. We're going to meditate upon the Word of God. We're going to think about them. We're going to cast down imaginations. Because here's the thing about something that is hope. Hope is something that you look forward to. And it doesn't matter what comes your way or who comes your way. <coughs> Nobody can take that hope from you. If we have truly confessed our sins and changed from our wicked ways, stop doing those bad things, and are doing everything we can get to heaven, well then we have that hope that when we die, or if the Lord returns and calls the church away, that we're going to go to heaven. And it doesn't matter who says what, an atheist can say, come in and say, well, there is no God. Somebody can say, well, where's your proof that this is going to actually happen? Oh, that Bible, that, it was written by man, you can't go by that. But if the hope is settled, there is no taking that from us. And where does that hope get settled? In our heart, but also in our mind. Well, you should live by faith, not by sight. You know, we live in this world today, I believe the world is crazy. I mean, in my opinion. Well, the other thing about they turn on the news, or shooting or killing in Harrisburg, Lancaster, New York. And but when we talk about day, Hope, we're also talking about eyesight. Where are you fixed on? Where is your where are your spiritual eyes fixed? What are they looking at? Then you should be looking at Christ's face. We should be looking at Christ's face. What happens when we get our eyes and our hope off of Christ? Then you sink. And we sink. We come like, uh, like Peter. Peter and we sink in the water. Why? Because we we can get so fixated on this world around us, we can get so fixated on our own situation. But when we realize where our hope is and get our eyes refocused back on Christ, that's when everything changes. That's when our mentality changes. That's when our mind changes. Because as long as we are fixed on our, our situation, all hope seems lost. That's like people, people worrying a lot and having fear. I mean, if you keep your, your sight on, on Jesus and, and, and keep your, your faith, I... I never fear never bothered me, you know. I never was scared of people. But today, those things that people are always, they say fear really bothers them and destroys you and that. But if you keep your, your sight on Christ, I don't think you have fear. It gives you more confidence. Absolutely. That's my opinion. And when we do that, we realize that we are putting on the helmet of salvation because we are remembering where our salvation lies. And it lies in Christ. And as long as our salvation lies in Christ, well, guess what? We have more control over our mind. And we can think about the good things of God and realize uh, what he has done for us because we're not fixated on the cares of this world. Not that we don't worry from time to time about situations, but we need to realize that where our true salvation lies, and it lies in Christ. And when we realize that, then we can think upon those spiritual things. We can meditate upon the Word of God. I can meditate upon the peace of God. Why? Because that's where... My, my opinion is, I think when you talk about meditation, and I never really did that a lot, but I think, like, I meditate like an hour, you know, like just thinking of Christ and just sometimes talking about Him. I think that brings you closer to Christ. It does. To me, it's like when I live, when you call somebody a Christian or a religion... And somebody has a uh, um, um, relationship with Christ. I think it's two different things. Because it is. when you went to church and called yourself a Christian, but then you're in a bar room, you're out doing drugs and drinking alcohol and living a sinful life, what good is that to you? Yeah, but if you aren't living that kind of life, then you're not really a Christian. Well, they call you, well, some people say when they go to church, uh, they're a Christian. They say. But if you don't follow, I, I've been there. I went to church. When I got out of church, I went drinking. I went partying. I mean, what good did that 
that didn't feed my soul nothing. No, but I do want to make a statement right here when we're talking about meditating upon the Word of God. People, even out in the world, quote unquote, meditate. But when they meditate in like yoga and stuff, that's not good things they're letting in. They're right. letting demons in. When we're talking about meditating upon the Word of God, we're talking about thinking about the Word of God. Thinking what He's done. Thinking about Scripture. Thinking and saying, even if it's like Mary, uh, even if we don't understand it, but pondering it in our heart. God, what does this mean? Reveal it to me. Why? Because it comes down to us and the importance of of controlling our mind, making sure that we are not letting evil things come into it. So you're saying when you meditate, I don't know what you're saying about yoga, what's that, an exercise and thing? It's a Middle so, Eastern so, religious exercise. So when you meditate that, then all kinds of things can come into your brain. It's actually I mean, demonic it's when it comes to that form of it, but yes. What's it, what do you say there? It's demonic. Yeah, okay. That form of meditation is demonic. But thinking about the Word of God is all right. And that's what yeah, we're Yeah, I you helped me. I know it But for the sake of time, let's close here. And we'll begin preparing our hearts for service. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. Lord, we thank you that your God who reigns on high and there's no light to you, Lord. Even right now, I rebuke every attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angels at the four corners of the property above and below. And no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds would be in one mindset, one accord, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth. That the Holy Ghost may move, make himself visible if he so chooses. Even right now, Lord, I pray that our hearts and our minds would be plowed, that they be good soil for your word to fall on. That we may remember it throughout the week, but even greater than that, that we would apply it to our lives. That we would be even farther transformed into your very image. Nor the song leader and the musicians as they praise you upon the string instruments and the vocal cords. Nor the pastor as he brings forth your message today. Yet anoint his mind and his lips to bring forth your words. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.